is come, that the Son of Man should be glorified. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brother, ye have done it unto me. Love one another as I have loved you. This is my body, which is given for you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. In a coming day, fear will die. Pain will die. Loneliness will die. Despair will die. In a coming day, sadness will die. Sickness will die. Disability, deformity, darkness, Anxiety will die, war will die, hatred will die. In a coming day, death will die. And we all will live again because of him.
My dear brothers and sisters, this conference has been historic in many ways. We have been blessed by the prayers, messages, and music. We have been inspired by servants of the Lord. We have received important direction for the future. My prayer is that the Spirit has spoken to you directly about things the Lord would have you do. The future is always uncertain. Weather changes. Economic cycles are unpredictable. Disasters, wars, and accidents, illness can change life quickly. These actions are largely beyond our control, but there are some things we can control, including how we spend our time each day. I like this poem by Henry Van Dyke, posted on a sundial at Wells College in New York. It reads, the shadow by my finger cast divides the future from the past. Before it sleeps the unborn hour in darkness and beyond thy power. Behind its unreturning line, the vanished hour no longer thine. One hour alone is in thy hands, the now on which the shadow stands. Yes, we should learn from the past, and yes, we should prepare for the future. But only now can we do. Now is the time we can learn. Now is the time we can repent. Now is the time we can bless others and lift up the hands which hang down. As Mormon counseled his son Moroni, let us labor diligently, for we have a labor to perform while in this tabernacle of clay, that we may conquer the enemy of all righteousness and rest our souls in the kingdom of God. The adversary never sleeps. There will always be opposition to the truth. I repeat my urging from this morning to do those things that will increase your positive spiritual momentum, that lift that President Uchtdorf was talking about. That will keep you moving forward through whatever challenges and opportunities come. Positive spiritual momentum increases as we worship in the temple and grow in our understanding of the magnificent breadth and depth of the blessings we receive there. I plead with you to counter worldly ways by focusing on the eternal blessings of the temple. Your time there brings blessings for eternity. As the Church grows, we strive to keep pace by building more temples. Forty-four new temples are presently under construction. More are being renewed. I pray for the skilled people who work on those projects across the world. In a spirit of prayerful gratitude, I am pleased to announce our plans to build a, a new temple in each of the following locations. Wellington, New Zealand. Brazzaville, the Republic of Congo. Barcelona, Spain. Birmingham, the United Kingdom. Cusco, Peru. Maceo, Brazil. Santos, Brazil, San Luis Potosí, Mexico, Mexico City, Benemérito, Mexico, Tampa, Florida, Knoxville, Tennessee, Cleveland, Ohio, Wichita, Kansas, Austin, Texas, Missoula, Montana, 
Montpelier, Idaho, Modesto, California. These 17 temples will bless countless lives on both sides of the veil. I love you, my dear brothers and sisters, and more importantly, the Lord loves you. He's your Savior and your Redeemer. He leads and guides His Church. May we be a people worthy of the Lord who said, Ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. For this I pray in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a very unique meeting house. It's a wonderful space. One look at Salt Lake City's evolving skyline and you begin to see why Utah is one of the fastest growing places in the United States. It's in the heart of all this growth that a new place of worship is welcoming its fast-paced neighbors. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has a new meeting house. It's a few blocks from Temple Square. You'll find it at the base of the new 95 State Office Tower. A meeting house is a sacred place for people to gather, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. What makes this unique, I suppose, is that it's architecturally a part of a commercial space. We have done that in several other places in Europe and in Virginia on the East Coast, but it just makes sense. Downtown office space, downtown land is very, very expensive. So by combining these two uses, it's the best use of the property and it's the most economical way to build a meeting house in an urban setting. We're trying to be wise stewards of these sacred resources that the Lord has blessed us with. The office tower provides a source of revenue to pay for the meeting house. A steeple was placed next to the meeting house entrance. It has a separate address from the new 25-story office tower, but both buildings share several features, including this terrace on the roof, which can be used by office tenants during the day and church groups in the evenings. The 39,000 square foot meeting house is four stories tall and makes the most of its location. With two chapels, it can host two congregations at the same time. The Sunday school room where the Women's Relief Society organization meets has all the features of a traditional classroom combined with this spectacular view. This would be the best view of any Relief Society room in the church, I think. Yeah, just an amazing space. This location also has a rich history. When Brigham Young and the first settlers came to the Salt Lake Valley, we didn't have chapels or meeting houses dotting the valley. They built a social hall, a building on this very site. The social hall was open from 1852 to 1922. 100 years later, its namesake promises to bring people together once again. This downtown block has always really been a place of gathering. So it's kind of exciting that there's now a new building almost on the exact same site. There's nothing like gathering. I think we're able to minister to each other. We're able to bless and, and lift each other as we meet together and socialize together and worship together. These facilities provide a place for that to happen. The Social Hall Avenue Meeting House will be dedicated this Sunday, April 10th. was heading to the garden. To the garden of Gethsemane. And three apostles, Peter, James, and John, were there. Jesus tells his apostles to stay there first while he goes alone. And don't fall asleep and keep watch. Watch with me. And he goes on a rock and he praised Heavenly Father. Father. I could tell that he was feeling really bad. Not about himself, about other people. It was difficult. It was so hard to him and he, for him, and he's like, uh, Father, will you, do I have to do this, or is there any other way? He was asking if he 
like didn't have to have all the bad stuff happen, but if it did, he would have it happen. He took everybody's sins on top of him. And it's, it hurt him so much that blood came out of every pore in his body. Blood came out of him head to toe. He was forgiving us of all of our sins and making it possible for us to repent. And he came back and saw that they were asleep. Sleepest thou? Couldst not thou watch one hour? So he went back and prayed again. And then they fell asleep again because he was taking a very long time and they were getting tired. And then an angel came. And he washed his body in a river. And then they woke up because some men were taking him to the cross. And Judas, one of his apostles, got paid to find, tell, tell the army where Jesus was. He said, like, I will kiss the one who you need to find. Jesus says, you betray the Son of God with a kiss. Thy betrayest me with a kiss. Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss. So they were going to take him away, and then Peter cut off the soldier's ear. So he healed the man's ear. And he's like, leave these other guys be, just take me. And they took him away. He likes us. He loves us. We can follow him and what, do what he did by, like, not pinching, biting, kicking, and punching. We can help people. Teach others and <laughs> preach and do what he has done. We can go to God whenever we need to go to him. So we can be forgiven. And helping people. We can choose the right. In a spirit of prayerful gratitude, I am pleased to announce our plans to build a, a new temple in each of the following locations. Wellington, New Zealand. Brazzaville, Republic of Congo. Barcelona, Spain. Birmingham, the United Kingdom. Cusco, Peru. Maceo, Brazil. Santos, Brazil. San Luis Potosí, Mexico. Mexico City, Benemérito, Mexico. Tampa, Florida. Knoxville, Tennessee. Cleveland, Ohio. Wichita, Kansas. Austin, Texas, Missoula, Montana, Montpelier, Idaho, Modesto, California. These 17 temples will bless countless lives on both sides of the veil.
if you and I are to withstand the forthcoming perils and pressures, it is imperative that we each have a firm spiritual foundation built upon the rock of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. So I ask each of you, how firm is your foundation? And what reinforcements to your testimony are needed? The temple lies at the center of strengthening our faith and spiritual fortitude because the Savior and his doctrine are the very heart of the temple. He endows us with his healing, strengthening power. And oh, how we will need his power in the days ahead.